So you've probably seen me post about soil testing or you've reached out to me and I've always asked, have you done a soil test before? Now that question may annoy you, but soil testing is key in figuring out where to start and where to go with your lawn plan. So in this video, we're gonna talk about <clears throat> what to do after you get the results of your soil test, what to attack first, and how to move forward to improve your lawn. So stay tuned. Now, if this is your first time doing a soil test and you get the results back and you're like, man, I don't know where to start, I don't know what to do, this video is going to act as a little guide for you on what to focus on first, what to focus on second, and then what to focus on going forward as you maintain your plan. Now, a few reminders before we get started. I will say the main thing that is going to be key here is A, knowing the size of your lawn. If you've never measured your lawn before, you have questions about that, I'll link a video about lawn measuring up in the corner above. Super easy, you can do it the old fashioned way with a wheel um, or a tape if your yard's small, or you can do it online, which is what most people do nowadays, and it's fairly accurate, it's what I personally do. It gives you, uh, you'll figure out your lawn size, which is gonna help you figure out how much product to buy, what type of products to buy, um, and where and how to apply them in your lawn. So don't skip that step, check out the video, and go from there before you go any further with interpreting your soil test results and buying products. And a little disclaimer here that I would throw in is that this is gonna be a marathon, not a sprint. Now you're gonna get your soil test results and it may look bad if you've never done anything to your lawn. It may look good. I mean, if it is, kudos to you. Uh, you have less work than, do, than everybody else. But I will warn you that you're not going to fix everything on your soil test within a month or even a season or maybe two seasons. It's going to be a continual process. You're going to have to work at it. Um, but don't get discouraged by it. I'm still working on stuff uh, from a couple years ago like an addition to my soil pH. So don't get discouraged. Just know it's gonna be a slower process, but you will get there and you will see improvement. Now let's get into the rest of the video. So I'd say the number one thing that you wanna focus on once you get your soil test results is your soil pH. Now whether your soil pH is acidic, which is gonna be a low pH, or if your soil test is says that your soil is alkaline, then that, which means a high pH. Both pHs, which I'll throw a graphic up here on the screen, you can see what the high and low pH can do to the grass. Now you wanna be right there in that middle optimal range, which is anywhere from six to 6.5. I like to target 6.5 personally for myself as my soil pH. Now historically, the last few years, I have been high, over seven, I've had alkaline soil, and I've been battling that with elemental sulfur. Now I went light with elemental sulfur last year, uh, but basically I'm going to plan to attack it harder this year. I've already put down four pounds per thousand square feet uh, a few weeks ago on the lawn and I've already noticed a uh, minor difference in things. Um, it does take a while to break down, but we've had a lot of rain here and it's gotten the ability to break down better. Get down in the soil, the soil temps are warming up even though we've had a cold snap and it's starting to work. Um, if you have acidic soil, you're gonna to wanna to look at lime products. Now, check out the link in the, in the corner above here uh, that I did on soil pH that has more detailed information in relation to what to do if you have alkaline soil or what to do if you have acidic soil. But the main thing here is if you focus on your pH and you get that into optimal range, the rest of the pieces are gonna fall into place. Now after the pH, the second thing I would focus on are your macronutrients. Now this is gonna be your nitrogen, your phosphorus, and your potassium. I would focus on getting these all into optimal range. Most importantly though is the phosphorus and the potassium. Now these are gonna hold in the soil longer. Nitrogen will go up and down depending on what you uh, apply. I typically shoot for um, mainly the phosphorus and potassium and try to keep those in place. Now, you're gonna to have to look at products if you're trying to correct deficiencies. Um, if you're super low in products, like I've used uh, sulfate of potash before, which is a straight potassium product, and I've used some high phosphorus products to get my phosphorus back into line. 
Um, but as far as the nitrogen, if your nitrogen's low, I wouldn't worry about that so much. Most of the products you're gonna be putting down have nitrogen in them, so you're just gonna to wanna to try to maintain that throughout the season. Focus on that phosphorus, which is your root growth, your downward growth of your roots. It's gonna help strengthen your grass and your potassium, which is, helps with your overall turf health. Now that's gonna help you when we get into summer uh, with drought tolerance and when the heat and disease stresses start to show up. Now if you have questions about correcting a potassium deficiency, I did do a video last summer. You can check that out up in the corner. Um, if you have more questions on that or need recommendations for products, it's a very helpful video if you're dealing with a potassium deficiency as a result of your soil test, so I'd recommend you go check that out. Now if your pH and your macros look good, the last thing to focus on is what they call your micronutrients. Now these are going to be all the nutrients, iron, um, and the rest of the stuff, boron, that's going to be on the end of your soil test. Now I've showed you my soil test results here before but we'll show them again. Now you can see that um, on my results my micronutrients are lower. That's been because I've been focusing on correcting that pH which I'm still focusing on this year and working on correcting a potassium and phosphorus deficiency which I got those numbers up but as far as the pH I'm still working on it. So I haven't focused so much on the micros. Um, most of the products, like the Turf Titan products I've been using, have micros included in them, and most products on the market that, especially liquid fertilizers, will put those in. I know the Yard Mastery products also use micros in their granule fertilizers as well. Um, but these are important to your lawn, but not as important as the macronutrients and the pH, in my opinion. So the key takeaway from this quick video here is when you get your soil, soil test results, don't freak out. Just kind of slow down, develop a plan, focus on correcting your pH and what you're going to do for that. Then focus on your macros, what you're going to do for that if you have deficiencies. And then focus on the micros. So three easy steps to focus on after you get your soil test results in order to develop a good plan to move your lawn in the right direction and get it looking great again. Now if you found this video helpful, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you don't miss future content here on the channel. And I look forward to seeing you next time, out in the lawn.